I'm so glad you could come. Oh, I wouldn't have missed it for the world. He's just got over his heart attack. There'll be another one soon. Did you know? Did you know Carrie's pregnant? Not many people do. No. No, I've got to see it through. Just your romantic notion. Think of your heart. <laughs> Hold on. I will listen. Mother. Freddy! I didn't hear the call. Uh -uh. And Caroline. You poor darling, fancy having to abandon your honeymoon. Not abandoned. Postponed. I'll make it up to you, though. Well, come through and have some tea. I'll do that. I can manage. Olivia, that's much too heavy for you. I'm quite all right. Please don't fuss. Now some tea. Yes, please. I'm so glad you came back early. Now we can talk about the house. I found the most wonderful apartment at Koimarama. Lovely views. I should be out of here in a month. And then all this will be yours. There's no need to rush into anything. Take it easy. I never rush. But once I've made up my mind, I see no point in dithering your tea. Oh. Chelsea, darling, do you have to? Why not the Portman? What? Brad and Caro. Grandma said they're coming back this morning. And Dad promised to bring me something from Tahiti. Really? How kind. You better hurry, you're going to be late. Brad, how old is Olivia? Rumour has it she's immortal. She's not. Haven't you noticed? You know, I never thought about her getting old. I don't feel right about her moving out. Let's ask her to stay. You're an old softie, you know that. All right, we'll ask her. But I bet she refuses. And I want to tell her about the baby. Oh, Cara, no. I hate this deception. Look, I don't like it either, but we need time to get Olivia on side. Now, I'll decide when to tell her about the baby. You don't know her like I do. Trust me. We'll deal with this as soon as I've got the magazine launch out of the way. I've got to make it a success. You will. You're terrific at public relations. Not too bad at the private kind, either. <laughs> hmm. I'll get it. <laughs> Caroline Redfern? Maxine? Is that our sordid feature, rich kids on dope? It certainly is. Phil Keegan's really pulled out all the stops on this one. He always was a master of the horticultural approach to journalism. What? Digging dirt, darling. The surest route to a big bar line. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have a look? Mm. Sexy Rexy strikes again. Get a load of this. It's priceless. Ah, Keegan's piece has got real punch. Should scare the pants off our embryonic competitor. A conniving little creep. Listen to 
after what that toad Rex Thorne has to say in his pathetic whispers column, is Medusa... Is Medusa about to ruin another woman's life, squired around town by a very married man? Medusa is no doubt plotting to soil his stainless reputation. She does, as we all know, specialise in broken homes and broken hearts. However, Medusa was seen to pick up the bill in more than one restaurant with her fancy man. Darling, your desperation is showing. Given her advancing years, we're not surprised to find the Gorgon paying for sexual favours. <laughs> Tragic, isn't it? My successor is determined to sniff out further details of Medusa's indiscretions. Watch this space. This is Rex Thorne saying goodbye to Whispers and hello to the big time. You have been warned. You have been warned. What's he all about? Search me, but it sounds delightfully ominous. <laughs> I'll kill him. How dare he drag our names through his disgusting column. Your wife's gonna have a field day on that. Calm down. It's much too vague to arouse suspicion. Anyway, Ingrid never dream of reading rubbish like this. Rex is up to something. I mean, what's his idea of the big time? My God. He's not going off to edit that new rag, is he? <laughs> Rex Thorne, hardly. <laughs> You're right. I mean, nobody in their right minds would let that buffoon loose in a magazine. Still no word on the backers? No. The money's coming from outside runners, that's all I know. Anyway, let's concentrate on gloss. This story's a winner. There's nothing I'll deprive readers like more than a juicy expose on the rich and famous. Not to mention the social conscience aspect. That's good for business. Yes. Maybe we should push our caring image a bit further. What a crusade. Why not? We could hire <laughs> ourselves a professional do-gooder. Someone mm. to back up our anti-drug stance. Well, there's a guy on one of Ingrid's charity committees, Malcolm Barber. Yeah, he runs a halfway house for teenage junkies. Perfect. He's bound to be desperate for publicity and money. So what's the angle? I've no idea. But me Jews are just bound to think up something brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Look at these. Our cash flow situation is chronic. Relax. I'll take care of it. When? It seems like this partnership is based on my hard work and your excuses. Will you stop panicking? There's a launch of this new magazine coming up, and we are going to be the caterers. Big bucks, Alex. And how did you score with that? OK, so it's not exactly scored yet, but my father's flown back from his honeymoon just to handle it. So, he probably knows it better than anyone else what an unreadable prospect you are. Do me a favour and get off my back. I'll get the job. Do that, or find yourself another partner. Oh, Alistair telephoned. He wants you both to have lunch with him tomorrow. That's nice of him. Whatever for? He would like you to ring and confirm this afternoon. You're all right, Caro. You've had hardly anything. Just tired. Flight did seem rather long. You look rather pale. Are you sure you shouldn't see a doctor? No. Really. Olivia, would you consider staying here with us? It would mean a lot to Cairo and me. I wouldn't dream of it. This house was your wedding present. But this is the family home. You belong here. There's so much history here. But now it's your turn. I had no intention of being in your way. You wouldn't be. You'd be helping us make a family. Oh, come on, Olivia. At least say you'll consider it. It's very kind of you to ask. I will consider it. I've heard a great deal about your work with drug addicts, Mr. Barber, and I must say I admire your dedication. Oh, thank you. But it is a collective effort. Quite. We want to make our contribution, too. As a mother. I am appalled at the plight of these poor children. I wish more mothers felt like you do, Mrs. Redfern. My son Kevin's the same age as many of the kids at the house. And all that stands between him and them is positive parenting. Positive parenting? That is exactly what we want to promote in the next issue of Gloss. Don't we, Reed? Yes. And I hope your son will be able to help us. Uh, what is your proposal? Well, we'll give you a percentage of the profits from this issue for your campaign. In return for, um, 
In return for... I'd like to publish a photograph of you and me and my daughter Chelsea and... Kevin? A Kevin. And run it alongside my editorial. I intend to publicize the halfway house and emphasize the bond between parent and child. And the importance of communication. With your cooperation, we will present a positive image of the family. I'm not gonna do it! Chelsea! It sounds like some type of wanted poster! Oh, don't be ridiculous. It's for a good cause. To make Moss look good, you mean? All you have to do is come to the office for an hour and have your photograph taken. You're just using me. Chelsea, please. It means a great deal to me. How much? Promise? Thanks. Lovely to see you. Do forgive the early hour. Hello, Maxine. You're obviously something of an art enthusiast. Well, I have such a busy schedule. This gallery very kindly gives me a private viewing. What do you think? It's very entertaining. Mm. But is it entertaining enough to spend $10,000? As an investment, of course. I abhor sculpture in the house. It's so pretentious. You wanted to talk about Chelsea. Does Brad know you here? You asked me not to tell him. I just don't want him to worry. Fatherhood isn't one of his strong points. Is Chelsea ill? Are you in a hurry? I have an appointment at 10. Well, nothing medical, I hope. Oh, forgive me, it's just that you look a little bit peaky. And then Alistair has asked Brad and me to lunch. Is he? How sweet of him. Maxine, what's the problem? Oh, Jason. Thank you. Since it was so early, I took the liberty of ordering breakfast. I just love the aroma of coffee in the morning, don't you? What is it? I think I'm going to faint. Come and sit down. Can I get you anything? What is it? You look as if... You're not pregnant, are you? Maxine, please. Congratulations. Olivia must be thrilled. She doesn't know. Maxine, please don't tell anyone. My lips are sealed. You can leave a message. I'm not expecting Cara back this afternoon. Oh, what a pity. I bought her a present. I didn't have time to wrap it up. Isn't it adorable? You must be delighted at the news. Yes, it is wonderful news. It's time this house became a home again. And the baby will see to that. Such a pity you won't be here to enjoy the cosy atmosphere. Brad tells me that he and Carol want this place to themselves. You're misinformed, Maxine. Both Brad and Caro have particularly asked me to stay. And I shall. Let's just get one thing clear. I don't want my children left out in the cold just because Caroline's so eager to stake her claim. Chelsea and Alistair are red phones too. All my grandchildren will be provided for. Unless, of course, they disgrace the red fern. They... I doubt that'll happen with Chelsea and Alistair. Of course, I can't speak for Caroline's progeny. Thank you for calling, Maxine. Give my love to the children. Who knows what skeletons might be lurking in her cupboard? After all, it was a very hasty marriage. You don't mind if I order for all of us? No, I love surprises. You're the boss. So long. This place ticking over, is it? You could call it a going concern. We've got a pretty good reputation. And an eye for quality. No point in half measures. Problem is, quality isn't enough these days. Isn't that right? 
How do you mean? Only that you have to sell yourself, keep up the PR work. Isn't there such a thing as customer loyalty? Oh, sure. But this town is addicted to trends. You've got to keep a high profile or the movers and shakers will forget you after five minutes. Poor Alistair, doomed to a ceaseless round of soirees and champagne breakfast. I would be if anyone had any sense of occasion. Alex and I used to do a lot of ritzy parties, but nothing's happening anymore. Well, the magazine launch is definitely going to be an occasion. Well, let's hope so. I didn't realize you were masterminding that launch. Didn't you? I thought you thrived on gossip. Not gossip. Public relations. Must be a family trait. Come in. Still suffering from the remains of jet lag. I don't think so. I don't understand. Oh, yes, you do. You're pregnant. Maxine. And you're angry. Why didn't you tell me? I'd much rather have heard from you. I wanted to. But I knew you'd think badly of me. Caro, I have my principles, but I'm not inflexible. I didn't marry Brad just because of the baby. I know that. You're a good influence on him. And the baby will help him to settle down. Don't you think Brad's done that already? He's always had a wild streak. Not like Bryce. The one who died? Hmm. Everyone called him the golden boy. I'm sorry you lost Bryce. But Brad's your son too. And he loves you. I've decided to stay. I'm glad. I hope you realize how important this baby is. Of course I do. Another golden boy. A red fern child has a lot to live up to. Hi, Jasmine. What a cow of a day. It's still in the morning. A regular little bluebird of happiness, aren't you? Drop dead. Oh, she's so lonely. It must be the pressure of the evening wear spread. Well, if you really want to know, evening wear's in trouble. What? You've been tiresome on the subject for weeks. What about your precious model? I thought she was coming from New York or wherever it is she struts her stuff. Well, Florence is here all right, but suddenly unavailable. And the photographer we always use isn't returning my call. What do you mean unavailable? Well, the agency says Maxine. she's already been booked. And no one else wears those clothes like Florence. You're an ungrateful slag. Gloss gave her her break when she was a suburban nobody. Find out who she's working for and cancel the evening wear. Cancel it? I've spent weeks doing business on the basis of those pages. Campbell, on this magazine, editorial calls the shots. The advertising department is not a creative entity. Well, what's the point of employing me as advertising manager? Well, I am, Campbell. Don't tell me my job. I'd like a word with you in private. If you must. Now what am I going to do? Get off the back side and come up with another idea. Do some work for a change, like we slaves in the coffee department. Magda, why don't you shut your badly made up face? Gloss would be nothing without the fashion department. A good picture is worth a thousand words. Spamming your features. She's illiterate, actually. You enjoyed that, didn't you? Little show of power in front of the troops. Well, your boat to see a number doesn't wash with me, Maxine, and I do not appreciate being made a fool of. Well, now you've got that off your chest, why don't you go down into your little hole, pick up the telephone and start selling space? Look, I don't mean to sound stroppy about this, but your kamikaze approach to this business is going to bring the whole thing crashing on our heads. It is impossible to satisfy advertisers if you keep switching stories. And then there's this drug thing. It is bad news, Maxine. The advertisers won't buy it. Then you sell it to them. That's what you're paid for. How do you expect... And seeing as you're so damn concerned about this magazine, why don't you put the hard word your ex-wife? Agony column is late again, and what she does manage to write is unfit for human consumption. No, that's not my problem. I've got nothing to say to Jane. I'm not surprised. She's incapable of holding a conversation without collapsing into hysterics. Apparently, married life did not agree with her. Or so I've heard. You leave Jane out of this. I intend to. Thank you.
Thank you, Campbell. That will be all. Lovely to see you. Thank you for the flowers. Well, it's great news. Another Redfern on the way. I'm not so good at choosing presents for babies, so it seemed more appropriate to buy something for you. How are you settling in? Oh, as well as can be expected. I do love this place. I wish I could say the same. I've never really felt at ease here. Something to do with the spectre of Redfern expectations. I sympathize. It's a formidable family. But you seem to have done rather well for yourself. I was impressed with your restaurant. I'm pleased to hear it. Most people see it as a frivolous sort of occupation. Well, I don't. As a matter of fact, I used to run a restaurant myself. Really? Where? Oh, you wouldn't know it. Little brasserie in Havelock North. The hours were murder, but it was great fun. Why did you chuck it in? My parents were killed. An accident. I didn't want to stay in Hawke's Bay after that. I'm sorry, that must have been hard. But I'm glad you left. Otherwise, Dad might never have met you. Sing. She's made sure everybody knows about the baby. All day I've had people offering sly congratulations. Oh, Brad, ignore it. It's all right with Olivia, and that's what matters. Yeah, you're right. I suppose in a twisted sort of way, Maxine's done us a favor there. There's nothing to worry about now, least of all for Maxine. What was Alistair doing here? Just dropped in for a chat. And? And nothing. Good heavens, Brad, he's your own son. And Maxine's. Don't be so paranoid. You should make an effort with him. He's really very sweet. In fact, I think Alistair would be the ideal caterer for the launch. So that's what he wanted. He never mentioned it. If Alistair wants that job, he can win it. Fair and square, like anybody else. such a talent for clothes, Chelsea. This dress, my dress, costs $600. You managed to make it look like a bargain basement reject. In future, keep your hands out of my wardrobe and clean this up. It's like arriving home in the wake of a hurricane. It's more like a hotel than a home. Oh, don't pull that little orphan stunt on me. You're more than happy to spend the money I earn. I wish I lived with Brad and Caro. I'm sick of your nagging. They'd nag you too if they had to put up with you. Get changed and get this dry cleaned. Oh, do it yourself. I'm going to Grandma's. At least I'm wanted there. Oh! One sherry, and that's your limit. Thanks. Um, thanks again for the bracelets. They're great. Glad you like them. Now, what's the problem? Daddy, do you know what I'd really like? Fire away. Can I come here and live with you and Cara and Grandma? Well, uh, Chelsea, sweetheart, I... You don't want me to. No, no, it's not that. It's just that the, uh, Maxine has legal custody. And your mother needs you. No, she doesn't. She's horrible to me. Oh, now, come on, Chelsea. Be reasonable. I know Maxine's very worried about you. Oh, she would say that. She's told you lies about me, and that's why you don't want me here. Oh. Father and I care about I you. I don't believe you! You're all the same! I'll drive you home. We'll talk about this. Leave me alone! <laughs> What a nightmare. Just because this care of all men recommends under Zut, Trollister. I've been stuck for hours making a fringe thing. Guess she must be rich. He always sucks up to the rich ones. What's up with you, Greg? Heavy night. So what else is new? 
Well, is it finished? Shove over. It's sitting in the fridge. I have its sickly glory. I hope you haven't messed it up. How could you tell? You wouldn't even run if I get a Finston soup. Caro can tell. And Caro has money. I want to keep her sweet. Caro! Glad you could make it. Get the dessert. Hi, how are you? Fine. For you. Thanks. Well, I've set a table and the dessert's on its way. I'm sure you've done a wonderful job. Ta-da! Oh, looks terrific. Great. I had a ball making it. Mmm. Superb. What a relief. Mm. You must put it on your menu. It's irresistible. Takaro's inspired dessert. Oh, I shouldn't really. Perhaps just a soup. Is she really falling for that rubbish? Afraid so. <laughs> I can go on better than that. I once had a waiter who sold a half bottle of Chateau de Kim for nine dollars instead of ninety oh. because he thought there'd been a mistake on the menu. Acting under his own initiative, he called it. Oh, no. But you're right about parties. They really are the worst. I mean, you work out a price per head, but you don't know whether you're feeding anorexics or a gang of gluttons. Right. Brad's been horrified at the cost of food for this magazine thing. Yeah? Oh, but I'm sure you'll advise him well. No, I'm so out of touch. I mean, $100 a head is the best quote he's got, and that doesn't include drinks. Shocking, isn't it? Mm. Have some more. Look at little Red Rage and Hood over there. She hasn't got a clue what that he says up to. Famous last words, sweetheart. Speaking of big bear wolves. Okay, spit it out. Far be it from me to put a little dampener on your fairy tale romance. But? But according to my sources, Alistair is having it off with one of the gloss staffers. You wouldn't? Don't take it to heart. You know how lies and innuendo follow him around. He's just that kind of guy. Standard. We're being well and truly stitched up by this other mag. Now that's snaffled my makeup artist. And at twice the normal rates. Boy, am I going to give those disloyal buggers a hard time when their mag folds. How do you know it will? Oh, they always do. I'm not so sure about this one. What's it called, anyway? We don't know. It's all real secret. All right, you lot in here. I've finished the editorial. Really pulled off a brilliant scam, oh painted one. Where is everybody? Oh, Maxine's pronouncing. You better get in there. Caring and sharing. That is the strategy we must use with our children. We must face up to the generation gap. We must open the channels of communication. Maxine, sit down, Magda. Now, bridging the generations, that's the key phrase. Jasmine, can you rustle up a wholesome sportswear spread for mothers and daughters? But what about my stuff on Japanese designers? Can it? Hang on. I think Jasmine's got a point. We need to get through to kids. I have no intention of turning gloss into a comic for snotty-nosed little That's kids. That's what I mean. This new mag has spent a fortune on market research, and I know for a fact that they've targeted readers who connect with fashion out of Tokyo or Sydney. Oh, good grief, Bridget. Do you honestly mean that you'd like to see gloss covered with lurid Paris and infantile drawings of koalas? What about free T-shirts with the next issue? How droll. Readers are snap them up. Free T-shirts? How tacky can you get? Well, try this on for size. Meet the competition. Let me. Oh, Where did you get this? Catchy name, isn't it? Got a certain dangerous allure about it. How ludicrous. Sounds like a cheap bar in the western suburbs. But what does it mean? Oh, it's from one of the nastier Greek myths. Electra and her brother murdered their mother. An extreme example of the generation again. Maybe a lecturer should have read the forthcoming issue of Gloss. Get back to work. <laughs> Gemma, sit down. Is there something wrong? No, no. I just want you to do something special in the next issue. Oh, I'd love to. Good. Let's see what you can do with Connie Hart. The agony column. Oh, good journalist can turn a hand to anything. Of course, if you feel you can't manage oh, Connie no, no, Hart. I, I can manage. I just thought it was Jane's job. Well, she's resting. I'm sure you won't find it difficult to assume her style. 
No. We well, could talk about it over lunch. Or are you otherwise engaged? No. Lunch will be fine. Oh. Um, excuse me, but I do believe this is our table. Gemma? Excuse me. If I'd known we were coming here, I would have worn something a bit smarter. Do you have anything smarter? I'm sure you'll work wonders on the magazine, Gemma, but I do expect total commitment. No problems there. I take my writing very seriously. Now, I mean commitment to the image of the magazine. I expect you to look as though you work for Gloss. I'm not quite sure I understand. Well, start by talking to Jasmine. She might not be able to string a sentence together, but she certainly knows how to dress. Then you'll go on an assignment with her. But magazine fashion writing's not That really... is an order. Not a suggestion. Alistair. Everything all right here? Fine. Oh, darling, order us something interesting. The menu's so boring to read. Oh, Gemma, this is my son, Alistair. Alistair, this is Gemma Stace, one of our up-and-coming writers. Hello. Pleased to meet you. I hope we'll be seeing more of you here. I'm oh, sure you will. This is just your sort of place, isn't it, Gemma? Yes. I think it is. There, I haven't lost the touch. Okay, I surrender. That's four in a row you've won. I always was good at games. Hello, Brad. Sorry, I'm late. <laughs> Dealing with an irate caterer. Oh, what happened? The whole thing was set, apart from the actual signing. Ricardo was beavering around, ordering up this and that for the Electra launch. And then suddenly, today, we got hit by a quote miles lower than Ricardo's or anybody else's. Well, that's great. The quote was Alistair's. Naturally, I got immediate flack about family connections. I didn't think economy was Alistair's fault. Neither did I. But you can't turn down a good deal, so exit Ricardo, enter Alistair. Aren't you pleased, Cara? Of course I am. Frankly, I'm amazed. I didn't think he could win it, fair and square. For once, I'm glad you've been proved wrong. So am I. Wonderful on you. You're joking. Anyway, I can't go in there. Imagine the prices. Oh, listen, Gemma, that's not just a dress. It's an investment in your future. If you think your future lies with gloss. But I haven't got the money. Oh, beg, borrow, or steal it. In this business, style means credibility. It's just not means. I thought I was being paid to, to write, not look like a fashion plate. You're being paid to please Maxine. And if she says smarten up, then you better believe it. Now come on. Can I speak to Greg, please? Food. I hope my doctor doesn't find out. <laughs> Too late. Oh, no, 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 not on there. Jasmine would kill me if I got a mark on these. They're her Italian vogues. Ah, not your usual bedtime reading. What's research? Part of the job. In this business, style means credibility. Now, that's something PR companies invented to keep themselves in work. <laughs> you can bet our hospitals aren't full of patients worrying about the cut of their doctor's strides. Well, it wouldn't hurt you to take a bit more interest in your appearance. You do look a bit crumpled sometimes. I think I was going to say. Oh, no, of course you don't. Don't take any notice of me. I'm tired. I can't think straight. All work and no play. That's your trouble. Hey. You on duty tomorrow night? Want to go to a movie? No, I feel like doing something really special. I'm getting this gorgeous new dress and I want to show off. <laughs> a new dress? I thought you'd never sent your name. I don't. Except for an extremely modest amount in my post office account, which I'm going to blow on our big night out. Hey, hold on. Oh, Mark, don't get all sensible with me. I'm investing in my future. 
And if you could possibly lend me the money for that dress, I'd be desperately, eternally grateful. Well, you know I can't resist you. Another tormented teenager with popularity problems. No one likes her, she hasn't got a boyfriend, and her parents won't let her wear makeup. Oh, tell her she's one of the lucky ones. Two years' time, her classmates will be pregnant, married, and queuing up for housing court loans. It's so difficult trying to get the right tone in these replies. Well, I wouldn't bust a gut over it. Bridget will serve you copies of death anyway, on the instructions of our charming commandant. Why are you so cynical about Maxine? I know she's tough. She's, she's not, not just not. tough, she's vindictive. She never gets credit where it's due. She's always quick to criticise, preferably causing maximum humiliation to her victim. You can add incompetence to the list. She's blowing it on this drug thing. Oh, well, we have to be seen to be doing our bit. Don't hand me that garbage. Maxine's in there with some tight old fart and this kid, and all I can see is money going down the drain. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Anyway, it's good for the magazine's image. You reckon? You're looking very tasty today, Gemma. Oh, Campbell, you sleaze. How's the concrete jungle treating our rural refugee? If ever you feel like a guided tour of some of our historic night spots. I don't think my boyfriend would appreciate that. Attached, are you? Oh, darling, Max won't like that. She prefers her workers to be married to the job. Doesn't she, Bridget? Late. Did you get them? If you breathe a word about this to Alistair, you'll be very, very sorry. I'm not stupid, Greg. Well, come on, hand them over. Uh-uh. Money first. Hey! Don't panic, Angel. It looks better if we keep moving. You saving up your pocket money? Mum likes to see me well provided for. Yeah, well, don't load on the booze with that stuff. You won't be able to handle it. I know what I'm doing. Quite a little tough, aren't we? Just remember, keep your mouth shut. Ciao. Hey, Greg. Can you give me a lift? Catch. Take a bus. What's this interesting object, Kevin? I play the French horn. Oh, how lovely. He has to leave it for orchestra practice. Music's such a pleasure, isn't it? <laughs> Chelsea just lives for her cello. She'll be here soon. She didn't want to leave school too early. Tea? Thank you. Excuse me for a minute. I want you to ring me up on my private line right now. Ring you? Just do it. Maxine Redfern? Oh, hello, Mrs. Crichton. Oh, the poor darling. Oh, thank God, it's not serious. No, 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 no. tell her not to worry. That's fine. Bye. I am so sorry. The most awful thing has happened. Poor Chelsea's hurt her shoulder at school and she's in the sick bay. Oh, poor girl. I hope she's all right. I'm sure she'll be fine. But I'm afraid that puts us in a bit of a pickle. Oh. 
Well, let's arrange something for another time. I'm late for practice. Just that I'm pressed for time. I'm oh, not poor sure. Poor Chelsea, you'll be so disappointed. Why don't we have dinner tonight and we can discuss. Oh, my this. wife's expecting well, bring me. Bring Mrs. Barber too. I'd love to meet her. Al's diner at eight. Oh my God. Yuck. Oh no. Brat. The little brat. Mark Rutherford. Well, well. Obviously my lucky day. Hello, Alistair. We try to maintain certain standards of dress here, but um, I'm more than happy to waive the rules for an old friend. Don't patch him Sorry I'm late. You look wonderful. Do you like it? You look stunning, Gemma. Hello, Alistair. This is Mark Rutherford. This is Alistair Redford. Nice to meet you, guys. Mark. Sorry, Mark. Let me show you to your table. What's wrong? Nothing. There you go. Thank you. Now, we've got a great specialty tonight. Crayfish tail and port wine, followed by honeyed pigeon with a nut stuffing. Mmm, sounds delicious. We'll decide in a moment. I've already decided. Soup of the day, and then calves liver. Right. Enjoy your meal. I will. You do realise you've got to order the most expensive thing on the menu. Oh, come on, you grunge. This makes a nice change from pizza and BYO. You look much too elegant to be seen out with the likes of me. <laughs> hey, there's Maxine, my boss. She always eats here. Don't stare. Shall we order some champagne? Not unless they sell it by the thimble for. <laughs> Lovely to see you. What a pity you couldn't do our evening wear spread. You blew it, darling. Your career's over. You're finished. What a paper tiger you are. As if you didn't know that Florence has been booked by Electra. And where did you hear that, Rex? On an assignment in the sewers, as usual. Well, you're slipping, Maxine. <laughs> oh, don't Brad and Alistair confide in you anymore? Red friends are falling over themselves to make Electra a scintillating success. You're a liar. An Electra hasn't got a hope in hell of surviving. I have a habit of destroying my competitors. Ah, but this time, Medusa, you've met your match. I'm the new editor of Electra. Chilling, isn't it? Are you sure I can't get you something, Caro? Lousy way for you to find out. I thought I handled it pretty well, all things considered. I thought you might see it as history repeating itself. Give me credit. I know a gold digger when I see one. You were afraid to tell me. No, no, that wasn't it. It was just I was trying to figure out a way to deal with your aspirations for us. You only respond to success. Then you should have nothing to worry about. That was a fantastic meal. Mm. Best I've had in a while. I'll be back in five minutes. I'll just go find the ladies. <laughs> Jimmer. Oh, my God. How much have you got? Not enough. Maybe I could ask Maxine to leave. No, I think it's too ghastly to contemplate. Look, I'll be back in five minutes, OK? Do I detect a little financial embarrassment in the air? <laughs> Come to gloat, have you? You're hardly in a position to be uncivil. Shall we say this one's on the house? I'm not interested in your favours. You come with strings attached. <laughs> Do you want me to forget about this? Or will there be an awkward scene? 
bit of a blow for Gemma with her employer on the premises. Very sensible. OK, let's go. What? It's been taken care of. How? I'll tell you later. No, I want to know now. Okay, Alistair had a bit of generosity. <laughs> I can't believe it. What a sweetheart. I'll go and thank him. Look, I already have. Allow me. There. We could send a car to you on Thursday. How's the food? Wonderful. I want to talk to you about a little... Hello, Maxine. Alistair. Uh, the bar's this way. <laughs> what can I do for you? Oh, nothing. <laughs> I, I, I just wanted to thank you. Don't mention it. This has never happened to us before. Look, stay for a drink. Oh, we couldn't. You can. Tell Greg your friends are mine. You're wonderful. What was it about? None of your damn business. Oh, no. You stupid idiot. You're taking the whole bloody lot. Get back to the bar. Where is she? Come on, you little idiot. Out. No, she's here. She's spoiled everything. She's told on me to Brad and Caro. <laughs> We're expecting our next issue to have a great impact. Mother dearest! Chelsea, darling. That's what I think of you! Get out of here. and mirror glass, the city's on the make. The devil takes the hindmost and no one counts the cost. It's such a sweet seduction. Love. You could call it ambition, but someone must be greed. Don't want you for a friend if you're a friend in need. I'm gonna tell the truth if you swallow a lie. I want the icing on the cake. Love. 